It's early June 2024, and this is an update on the schoolie plumbing. I wanted all the plumbing to be interior to the schoolie, nothing undermounted, so I had a chance at keeping it above freezing in the wintertime. This tank wasn't designed for RVs, but the price was right. The size is okay at about 45 gallons, and it will fit back there in the garage. We recently had as house guests two biologists who live on an island and collect rainwater for drinking water so they know quite a bit how to keep contaminants out of drinking water. They said it's important that the freshwater tank be kept away from sunlight. So to that end, I've done a few things. I've painted this back window jet black. I'd intended to cover it up anyway to keep prying eyes out of whatever valuables might be in here, but the freshwater tank is going right there. I've painted the back end of the freshwater tank black as well, though the adhesion sucks. And I've cut this black shower curtain liner to drape over it as well. Here in the garage, I screwed this 2x4 frame to the plywood floor to keep the tank from shifting, and I have tie-down straps as well. There was already some insulation under the plywood floor, but I had some extra, so I put some insulation underneath the tank and on the external side. The double wall construction common in sticks and bricks houses allows you to hide all the plumbing and electrical connections, but I didn't want to take up the space that double wall construction requires, so I've got single wall construction throughout, and that means that occasionally you have some plumbing connections like this showing, and in one corner of the bedroom got a bit of surface mount plumbing and electrical. Not easy on the eyes, but easy to surface. Because no plumbing is hidden in the walls, I have to tolerate this surface-mounted piece of blue PEX pipe, but at least it's blue against blue here in the bathroom. And most of the plumbing is confined to the garage and to this plumbing closet that's going to have a door over it. I stood in the plumbing aisle of the hardware store and debated whether to invest in a whole hundred pack of these PEX crimp rings or just get a couple packs of ten. Turns out I've burned through almost eighty of them. Here is the freshwater tank fully shrouded though I've left a flap here so I can check on water levels. My intention is to fill the freshwater tank only with water from the city that's already been processed, as I've done in the past. No harvesting water from rivers and lakes. But just to be careful, in the system I'm adding a 5 micron carbon filter. It lives in the garage, along with the freshwater tank, the pump, and the accumulator just downstream from the accumulator. In circumstances where a component like this leaks or needs servicing or the filter needs replacing, it's desirable to be able to take it out of the loop. So I've got this bypass system here using three shutoff valves and the bypass is currently in effect. I've shut off the output, shut off the input and opened up the alternate path. Here's a diagram I found showing how the bypass works. The only way I could think of to absolutely guarantee that no harmful bacteria or viruses that might fester over time in the fresh water tank would end up being consumed by me or my family is to add this ultraviolet water purifier. It lives in the same plumbing closet as the on-demand propane water heater and comes into play just before the water heater and the cold water supply to the various taps. I could have gone with the Berkey filter, but I didn't really have the height clearance for that at the kitchen counter. I also could have gone with a small tap here connected to an undermounted filter to produce drinking water just here in the kitchen. But I want to have safe drinking water from all sources, not just here in the kitchen but also for brushing your teeth in the bathroom. Here in the bathroom, I've mounted this shower head on a drawer slide, so it will clear this countertop. I don't expect we're gonna be taking a lot of showers in here, but I don't want the grandkids to worry about not having to uh, get any of the water in their mouth from the shower. So the filter and the UV purifier I've installed are of a scale to be whole home. They're going to purify the water for every outlet. Here's what the setup in the garage looks like from the rear door. Here's the freshwater inlet 
I haven't hooked it up yet to the freshwater tank because it takes a one and a quarter inch inside diameter hose and I haven't tracked any of that down yet. I would probably just fit it through this removable lid anyway. So for now, I'm just gonna use that lid to fill the freshwater tank. I have a drinking water hose to fill the freshwater tank, but I don't happen to have a tap on the front of the house within reach. I've already been camping in locations where the freshwater spigot was down the lane from the campsite, so I expect there will continue to be occasions when I have to fill the freshwater tank using a smaller container repeatedly. To make that easier, I just got this pump to pump from the portable toad into the big freshwater tank. The one I picked is 110 volts. That was on purpose because I actually have more ready access to 110 AC than I do 12 volt DC. I have a 110 volt electrical outlet here on the exterior of the bus, not far from the freshwater intake. Self priming. Five and a half gallons per minute. So two and a half gallon container. There's an early learning. The hose pops out and sprays water everywhere. Take two with a clip to keep the hose from falling out. Adding water to the freshwater tank from the blue jug four times added about 10 gallons or made it about a quarter full. Now to find out how many, if any, of the numerous connections I've made leak. To the left of the sink, I have the controller for the on-demand water heater and a kill switch for it. It's going to remain off for now. The propane's not hooked up yet. Below it is an on-off switch for the UV purifier and for the water pump. Let's do this now. And yes, we have some leaks where I've hand tightened things, perhaps not quite enough. Well, I got that tightened down. Cold water's working in the bathroom. The observant among you will notice the totally half-assed gray tank system I've got, which is a five-gallon Canadian tire bucket. It's the same sophisticated system I have in play here in the kitchen. I used these buckets temporarily on prior camping trips and ended up liking them. I don't need a dumping station, which aren't always handy. I can just take the bucket and pour it out, say, in a public toilet. If this turns out to be too cumbersome, I'll do something different, but for now it's working. A question frequently asked by none of my viewers is if your gray water buckets are all up high inside the bus, where will the wastewater from the shower go? If you look under the kitchen sink, you see that the Canadian Tire bucket here is actually two buckets. What I plan to do is take the bottom one out, the empty one, and put it under the bus when anyone takes a shower, and the drain coming out of the shower pan is just going to go straight through the bottom of the bus so it can empty into the bucket. Let's see what awaits when I turn off the bypass for the carbon filter. Oh, we have leaks. Let's see about the UV purifier. So far, so good. And finally, the water heater. There's one tiny leak here, but at least it's almost inaccessible to repair. Damn. A couple days have passed and I've decided to try some of this pipe dope or compound on a couple of the leaks. It seems to me like a washer in here would help as it does with a garden hose. This is not the standard size for a garden hose washer, but I had some gasket material and 
I custom cut one crudely, but it may make a difference. If this plus the compound stops the leak, I won't know which one did the trick, nor will I particularly care. This stuff is really goopy. I like that. After 20 minutes, a paper towel under this joint remains dry, so I think I've licked the problem of the leak here. But the pipe compound has not solved the problem of this filter housing leaking on both sides. Troubleshooting continues. I had to do a certain amount of disassembly to have access to these joints where there were small leaks, but once I did that, recrimping them seems to have done the trick. But with the carbon filter housing, torquing down this fitting almost to the end of the threads has not stopped the leak. This filter housing is the one problem with leaks that remains in the plumbing system. I headed over to Niagara Trailers in Niagara on the Lake Ontario and they have the hose I need for the fresh water inlet. It was really hard to reach the pipe clamps back there to tighten them but I've got the inlet hose installed. I'm at my workbench trying to figure out how to get these two to mate without any leaks. The fellow in the plumbing aisle at the Home Depot said to use Teflon tape plus pipe dope. The pipe dope I'd used previously was non-metallic and worked for a joint that was two pieces of plastic. But this one has metal and he's recommended pipe dope that's designed for metal. And that's well and good and I'm going to do that. But for a bit of extra insurance, I'd like to see if I can use this gasket material and add a gasket around here. There's no lip inside there that would permit me to cut a gasket and fit it inside that hole. But I picked up some of these, they're called spacers, but I'm going to use one as a washer. See if I can create a backing there and then put a gasket after it and create a seal against the black surface there. So here's what I'm going to try. Two of those washers plus the hand cut gasket. I don't know. I have a good feeling about this. I've reinstalled the filter housing. Time to test it. Pump on. Water flowing. So far, no leak on this side. And no leak on this side. That's terrific. The total number of plumbing leaks now stands at zero. Plus, over the last few days, I've added a door and a drawer that is hiding most of the exposed plumbing. So the plumbing project is now done.